So, good evening. Oh, it's good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to recover from uh, the trauma of yesterday. It was really a trauma for me. I looked forward to uh, yesterday. I looked forward to the 26th of uh, uh, June uh, to file in my nominations. Uh, uh, yeah. I, th I think it, I was ready way before, way before, way before all the other uh, candidates. And, um, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine? Up to now, I still feel bad about, uh, about what happened. It has really just disturbed me so much. It has really disturbed me. But I like, um, uh, you know, the Chilfatayali challenge. I mean, that guy uh, made me laugh. Uh, uh, anyway. Mm. I'm trying to see, I mean, some of your comments, the comments that you are, that you are, that you are writing. I was waiting for this live broadcast. Okay, I will. I will talk about it. Yes. Anyway, so, so now let's 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 let let let, let me take you through um, what really uh, happened. Let me take you through what really happened. Uh, uh, contrary to you know what many people are, are saying that uh, I was late. I want to make it very clear from the onset that I was not late. I was not late for that uh, nomination. I mean, if you want to believe that I was late, that is up to you. As far as I'm concerned, and even Alex Mwansa knows that I was not late. Even, um, uh, who is this, uh, uh, Patrick, they know I was not late. They just defranchised me. This was a calculated move to defranchise me. It was a calculated move to defranchise me. And how did it start? Look, um, from way back, whenever there is a by-election, whenever there is a by-election, the ECZ usually uh, send letters with details of uh, you know the political parties and the, the by-elections that are going that have occurred and um, uh, you know other details. It has always been like that. And remember, before I was actually in the civil society, I was in Zambian Voice. So even when I was at Zambian Voice, as civil society, we were a stakeholder. And we used to receive uh, uh, communications from ECZ. I, I, many, many times we were receiving. I don't remember when we had a by-election and ECZ never communicated. They were always communicating. Krisik Akufuna, uh, to some ex to an extent of even phoning you directly, you know, I remember receiving phone calls from Chrissy Akufuna, you know, inviting you for a meeting, confirming if you have received the uh, the the invitation and things like that. This time around, under the leadership of Chombachi Chombachi um, Chombachela and M Margaret Chimanze. We have only received, the last time that we received a letter of invitation was when we had the first elections. The first elections which we even participated, the one we participated in, in Murilan Solo. At that time, they sent letters to us and we attended the meeting. We have always attended the meeting, ECZ meetings. And of course, we even participated. The Chilanga by-elections, we never received any, any, any communications. This by-election, there was no communication. But I found out from other political parties as well, and they have confirmed to me that they too did not receive the communications or invitation from ECZ. Now, on Monday, on Monday, when I realized Monday 25th, 25th of, uh, of, uh, of June, I realized that the following day was a nomination day. So I got apprehensive. I'm like, I mean, tomorrow is nomination. 
and no meeting has taken place. What's going on? So I called Margaret Schmanse, please follow me very well. In the morning, I called Margaret Schmanse, and uh, um, she told me that. I told her to say, what's going on? I mean, we haven't received any communication relating to the, to the, to the elections. Then she said, uh, um, give me 10 minutes, I'll get back to you. But she indicated that they were having briefings. And I said, but those briefings, we never got any invitation. Then she said, they had put an advert in the papers and on uh, public uh, television. She said, uh, they had put an advert on ZNBC. And I told her, I said, sorry, madam, we never got that. So she said, give me 10 minutes. Give me 10 minutes, I'll call you back. She asked me to give her my number because I called her on the landline. I gave her my number. She was supposed to call in 10 minutes. She didn't call me. When she didn't call me, when it was 12 hours, I decided to call her back. And I asked, Madam, you said you'll call me back in 10 minutes. Then she said, sorry, um, I, I, sorry, I didn't call you. Anyway, she went ahead and said, uh, and the meeting has just finished at Nakatindi. I'm like, which meeting? She says, a meeting brief, a briefing candidates. You know, candidates were being briefed at Nakatindi, at the Civic Center. So I'm like, now what am I going to do? Because if that meeting has finished now, what am I going to do? Because I'm, I'm a candidate, I'm contesting. Then she said, come to ECZ. We will take you through. Come to ECZ, we will take you through. Remember, I'm calling at 12 hours. I drove to ECZ. I think I was there about 14.30 somewhere there. 12.30 somewhere there. When I reached there, I found Margaret. She was in a meeting with the, with the UPND. Then Sylvia Masevo told me, come with us to this meeting. So I went with Sylvia Masevo in this meeting, and that's when Margaret Chimanse saw me. Had it not been for Sylvia Masevo, I wouldn't have gone into that meeting, and I wouldn't have seen Margaret Chimanse. But because Sylvia Masevo invited me into this meeting, uh, Margaret Chimanse came to me and took me outside. We had a bit of a, a countercation just there, because I was getting tensed up, I was like, I mean, you, you call me here, and yet you are in a meeting. Then she said, go, go, to the, go to the council. So I had to come to the council. By that time, it was already 13 hours. So 13 hours, I knew these council workers, they, they know how to work. They respect time, such as lunch hour, but they don't respect time of arriving at work or knocking off. But I'm sure if you go at 13 hours, I knew they were not going to attend to me. So we, we, we went somewhere, had lunch, and then went to a civic center. When we went to civic center, we went to the office of the town clerk. The town clerk was not there at 14 hours. So we were directed to another office, which is 204, and this office belongs to uh, Patrick Shumba. Patrick Shumba, when I introduced myself, he took me into his office and he, he, left, us, he left us there. He went outside. It took a good long 40 minutes before he got back to us. When he came back in the office, when he came back in the office, he took us through the process. By this time, we we're going already, already to about 15 hours. After taking us through, he called um, uh, uh, that other man, I don't know if it's Chikumbi. He called him, eh? he called him, and this man had the list of political parties who were going to, to file in their nomination. And he told him that he should give me the documents and he should add on the list there our political party because our political party was not, was not indicating. And this list, this list contained the political parties and the time at which they were going to file in. Each political party was given 30 minutes. And according to them, 
this 30 minutes, uh, the, uh, the, the, this time exceeded up to 15.30. The time on this list exceeded up to 14, up to 15.30. The last political party there was supposed to be filing in at 15.30. So he said, since the last party is filing in at 15.30, you will file in at 16 hours. Fine, fine, fine. We are going to include the whatever there and the documents were given to me. The following day, of course, I had to struggle between, because now this was 15 hours, I had to struggle to get people to get accredited and so on and so forth. Nonetheless, we managed all that within the short time that was left for us. The following day, which was now a Tuesday, yesterday, we went to Civic Center at before 15 hours, before 15 hours. When we reached the gate, our people could not be allowed they could not be allowed because the police said that on the lists, our political party was not there. And they called me, they said, we, our political party is not there. And some people were even saying that we were told that you have withdrawn. I said, I'm here. I haven't withdrawn. I'm here to, to file in my nomination. So the police said, we need to get clearance from inside. That's why we started waiting there by the gate with my people. That clearance didn't come. Next thing, I received a phone call from one of uh, the journalists that they are announcing that uh, they are closing the nomination. Another police officer came running to me and said, he is announcing that they are closing. Eh? That's how the police allowed me alone to go in. I went in, I even reached where you know this town clerk was and other officials. I wanted, you know, I was anxious to say, what's going on, what's going on here? I'm being told that you're closing. Then they said, we are still attending to other political parties. And by that time, it was UPND which were, who were being, um, uh, who were doing the, the, the filing in. I even went and hugged um, a, a, a congratulation. I hugged him there, okay? And uh, the UPND were sitting there. So... We were, we were there, really, and the, Emily even called me to say, why are you panicking? I mean, everything is okay, you are here. I said, no, I heard that he is closing. He said, no, 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 look at others. Just relax, go, uh, just wait. That's how I came out. I came out, and this, this official who was escorting us, an ECZ official, even gave us a corner where we were supposed to sit, to say, he was speaking in Nyanja, we'll put you here. At that point, I even brought in all the people that were supposed to uh, back me up. And we stood there, waiting for us to be called in. We waited until everybody finished. I even attended to a number of journalists who came to our corner there. I had interviews, you know, giving them, you know, all my aspirations on a day day and whatever, whatever. You know, all my hopes and everything. I, I attended to, to the journalists there. Afterwards, Afterwards, when they finished there, an, uh, uh, an, uh, an official came again and took us in. Took us in. When he took us in, my secretary general was already actually inside because he went in first. He was sitting there by the tables, you know. He was there. Then he just saw, you know, officials leaving, you know. Well, by the time I was walking in, a number of officials, ECZ, including the commissioners, had left. And this man says, no, uh, you are late. I can't accept your nomination. I was like, how? I'm here. Eh? How do you say I am late? You can't accept my nomination when I'm here. Now, clearly, if you look at the way events unfolded, there was a charismatic ploy of making sure that somewhere, somehow, I don't file in my nomination. I even came to realize later, because the documents were given to me, I mean, even after five, the documents for, for, for filing in, you know, these documents, these documents were given to me, um, they were given to me much, much later, 
okay and when i started going through the papers i actually found that one document was not among the among the papers one document was not among the papers and i am sure if they didn't if 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 uh, if it wasn't for time i am sure these guys they would have found one reason or the other to disfranchise me I'm sure they would have found one reason or the other to disfranchise me. The issue is they just didn't want me to fall. I was not late. I was there. Imagine UPND doing the nomination. I'm there. Uh, UPND, uh, uh, what is this? Narep, you doing the nomination. I was there. Even this guy, Peterson, doing the nomination. I was there. Eh? About three political parties. They were filing in. I was there myself. How can you say I was late? I was late. Jason was there. I had Jason. Eh? And these others. I, come on, how? You know, so please, for those who want to believe that I was late, let them believe so. Because that is their choice. As far as I'm concerned, I was not late. I was not late at all. That Alex Simwansa knows what he was doing. He knows what he was doing. He must have received instructions from somewhere. And even the way those two behaved, you know, that Patrick, the way he behaved, eh? the way he behaved, I mean, he behaved like he had never seen me. He behaved like he had never seen me. And I was asking, come on, didn't you tell me 16 hours? The man who told me you'll be filing in at 16 hours was sitting right there. And he, 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 he pretended as if he had not even seen me. And they kept on saying, you were not here. I didn't see you. I didn't see you. Now, fine, let's ask. Let's imagine. They say it is 400 radius, 400 meters radius. So, 400 meter radius. Suppose I was just behind the building. How would that man say, uh, I was outside, I was away? Eh? Because what they say is that as long as you are within the 400 meter radius, you should be filed, you should, you should file in. So suppose I was just in the next room, but all that, all that is just a, a, a worst case scenario. The fact is that I was there. And so many people saw me. The police officer saw me. I was busy there chatting with the police officers. You know, I mean, what's going on? <laughs> it's, 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 it's totally something else. Now, look, I went to ECZ. After that altercation that most of you saw, and really, uh, I, 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 I just got emotional because I couldn't believe that that injustice was happening before my face. I couldn't imagine that I faced, you know, an injustice right in my face, you know, blatantly in my face, put on my face by Alex Mwansa. Just like that, just like that, that man, really, e that man, Alex Mwansa, I will for, forever remember that man. I will forever remember that man. But you see, I am a Christian. I don't wish him bad, not at all. I don't wish him bad. I don't wish him bad. I don't hold grudges. For me, when something is wrong, I bust. I say what I have to say. You know, I say what I have to say. I don't hold grudges. That's why I speak too much. That's why I just, I want to, ex to express myself and I leave it there. So I've got no grudge against that man. Uh, he shouldn't fear that he, when I become president, I will make his life miserable. No, not at all. What will make he, his life miserable? If it is, if he continues being compromised or being, you know, uh, somebody who is not attending to his work, like at 14 hours, he was not there. Nonetheless, Going to civic, going to civic, going to ECZ. When I reached ECZ, everybody knew. Everybody knew. Phones had already communicated. We could not even be allowed. The moment we were coming in, ECZ almost wanted to close like like there is nobody, and they only pushed this uh, lady, a police officer, to talk to me. And as I was talking, standing there, she received three phone calls. They couldn't. They were telling her, they were instructing her not to allow me to go past the gate. 
They refused. They said, no, you cannot see the commissioners. You have to set an appointment. But remember those commissioners. Those are public offices. And they want you, for you to go there, you must set up an appointment. Nonetheless, fine. Things are, are like that in Zambia. Okay. So I said, can I go in and make an appointment? I could not even be allowed to even see a receptionist. I could not even be allowed. And yet they were telling me I have to make an appointment. So I was asking, how do I make an appointment if I can't even see a secretary? How do I make an appointment? Eh? And the policewoman was just there helplessly, not know what to do. She just said, I'm sorry, there is nothing that I can do. I can't allow you in. Maybe come another day to come and make to make a, to come and make that uh, that uh, an, uh, that uh, appointment. So, my dear brothers and sisters, you may not like me, you may not like me, and you may uh, be happy over what happened to me. But you know, an injustice is an injustice. Today it has been done to me. Tomorrow you never know who it will be done to. Having said, saying that, I also remember that I have seen some of your comments. People saying that uh, I have faced what uh, the UPND have been facing and have been, have, been, have been rejoicing. I don't think I do rejoice over any injustice. I don't think I do rejoice over any, any injustice. When I've seen an injustice, I have affronted it. I have totally refused. I don't celebrate any injustice. When HH faced an injustice, I did stand up to speak against that injustice. And I was even incarcerated for it. I don't think I have ever supported an injustice. Wherever it shows its face, I don't. I don't tolerate an injustice. If, I, if some of you think that I celebrated an injustice to HH, well, it was not an intentional it was not intentional or it is maybe due to poor my, poor my poor judgment. I'm just human. So sometimes I may be wrong. Like some of you may be genuinely feeling that, yes, I was, I was late, but I was not late. So basically I am saying I don't tolerate injustice, whether it is on me or it is on another person. The other point is, you know, some people... I've come up and they are, they are saying, you know, uh, I was paid. There are some people who are saying I was paid and uh, to put up that, that, that stint or that act. <coughs> I, think, I think, please, my dear brothers and sisters, let us be fair. Be fair with me, honestly. Some of the accusations that you make on me, they are really unfair and they are quite hateful. I may not be rich. I may not be rich, but that does not mean that I sell myself cheaply. That does not mean that I sell myself cheaply. I don't sell myself. I just don't sell myself. I respect my conscience more than anything. I respect my conscience more than anything. I am a man that strongly believes that when something is wrong, it is wrong. No matter which way, no matter who is involved, I keep repeating this, that one of my good friends in the PF government, I can assure you, is Kaiza Zulu. Kaiza Zulu is my friend. I mean, it's, I, I'm putting it blank, blankly there. Kaiza Zulu is one of my good friends. And uh, he has his weaknesses. But I, I, I'm confessing, Kaiza Zulu is my friend. But if you look at... Anything that Kaiza Zulu has done in public, which I've come, which I've known about, I have not spared him. I've not spared him. When Kaiza Zulu was accused in the post that he was being investigated to have gotten 200,000 um, 200, to set an appointment for a Chinese to Edgar Lungu, I was one of those people who was singing about that. When Fred Membe was arrested, I was talking about it. I was talking about it. When Kaiza Zulu was entangled with the issue of, uh, of uh, you know, a hero stadium where he harassed some officials and everything, 
I was one of those who was saying, arrest Kaiza Zulu. I was one of those. A number of times I've had a press conference to call Edgar Lungu to say, Edgar Lungu, Edgar uh, Kaiza Zulu is, is uh, messing up your office, is uh, bringing the office of the president into ridicule. I've done that. Recently, over the Mukula tree, Kaiza Zulu had 10 trucks of that Mukula tree. I, I was there talking about that. Kaiza Zulu ended up losing that Mukula tree. And he was very upset with me. He was very upset with me. I did. I even went on TV for goodness sake. I even paid. I even paid to go on TV so that I can talk about that. So, if you talk about, you know, me sparing people, me being paid, come on. I think, please, when you make such accusations, please think twice that you are just uh, persecuting an innocent man. By the fact that somebody will give me a, a 10,000 quarter like one Kaiza Zulu did at one point, it doesn't make me compromise myself. I agree. There are a number of times some of these PF friends have given me something. But that doesn't make, it doesn't make, it make a difference for me. I still, when there's something wrong, I will go for it. I will go for whoever that person is. So it is so unfair that you would accuse me during this time that uh, I was paid to put up a stand, to go late. Remember, I had so many people behind me. I had so many people behind me. A number, you people, you think that, I mean, Chirifatayali political party, there are no people. There are so many people that are behind us. We printed T-shirts, about 500 T-shirts we printed, and we, 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 gave them, uh, we gave them all to our members. And they were all with me. Even when we were doing all this, they were all with me. So at which point would I be paid and then just put up that act? It's that accusation that I was paid, it is, uh, it is just a, a, an unfair accusation. I was not late, but they just didn't want me to fire in. Others, you know, like, some, like my brothers at Watchdog, they wrote Chirvatayari disqualified because he doesn't have a, a grade 12 certificate. I, a grade 12 certificate, where is my grade 12 certificate? At others, at doesn't have a grade 12 certificate. There is my grade 12 certificate, which I, which I even uh, authenticated with ECZ. I was ready for everything. So, I mean, that, that issue, come on, please. Uh, and uh, I mean, I just like to be humble, not to blow myself what, what in terms of whatever. But anyway, there is that. Then others, uh, coming up with all sorts of funny stories to say he's a joker and so on and so forth. Fine. You can, you may perceive me as a joker. You may perceive me as a joker. Thanks very much. Thank you. Just, let me just, let me just. You may perceive me as a joker, but certainly I want to save the Zambian people. I may be a joker, whatever you may think, I don't, I don't mind. But for me, I want to save the Zambian people. And right now, it is not so much um, about me. This is not so much about me. I am actually crying for a number of people who hoped that I would come in and help them in various ways. Right now, I've got a people from, from Kulima Tower who are being harassed by cadres? Eh? Who are being harassed by cadres? They have been displaced from where they used to sell. Cadres have sold their their shops. Cadres have sold their shops. They have been displaced after the cholera issue when they went out. Some people have come in and cadres have given new people. So the old people who are there can no longer trade. A group of them used to come to this office. 
pleading with me to say, please, when you come, if you come, uh, if you if you become uh, the mayor, please help us sort out the issues of our shops. I have a number of people in communities who are calling me that our area they want to de to demolish our houses. We bought houses from Kadas. But now they want to destroy our houses. I'm crying for those people because the PF don't have a heart. The PF, they give cadres to mess around and afterwards they go and destroy their houses. I wanted to come and help those people. A number of people, a number of young people were calling me to say, look, but Dad, we are just drinking. We have got nothing to do. I was hoping to give them a job. I was hoping to employ them to be collecting uh, uh, levies for the council. I was hoping to give them some of these contracts which have been given to cadres. I was hoping to do that, create employment. A number of people are suffering. They have got no accommodation. They are looking for where they can, where they can have shelter. Accommodation in Lusaka is very expensive. I was looking forward to build houses. Cheaper houses, which people would have rented, which people would have, um, you know, uh, rented at a cheaper price. Young people would have rented at a cheaper price. I was not going for this position for myself. I was going in there to make sure that I deliver to the Zambian people. That's what I want. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. I wanted to fight corruption. I wanted to fight corruption. I wanted to make sure that every penny that goes into the council, that the Zambian people pay to the council is put to good use. At the moment, that council is filthy with corruption. This is why I'm not even surprised that people like Alexi Mwansa could not imagine me going into the council because they knew this man coming here will be in trouble. We won't be able to steal. We won't be able to get to my kickbacks from people. We won't be able to slumber on the job. I'm sure he was too happy to execute a plan that was uh, that was that was that was uh, uh, skimmed by somebody. He was too happy to do that. He was too happy to do that. So, my brothers and sisters, I am really crying. Not so much for myself. I am able to live. I am able to live. Myself, I'm able to live. And some of you who actually make jokes about me and about my life, you are just young people. Young people looking for a life. Looking for somebody to help you to get a job. Looking for somebody who can speak for you because you are being paid little money. And when you come to social media, just because you are you are you love PF or you love whoever you come and insult me. Believe you me, I am not as bad as you think. I'm not as bad as you think. Yes, I don't have riches, but certainly I am not bad as you think. I do manage. I have people around me who are earning a livelihood out of my life. I look after so many people. I look after so many people. Out of the little that I do, whichever way God blesses me, I help a lot of people. So don't think that when you say all sorts of things, demean me, you are poor, you are what? Come on, you are wasting your time. I am not as bad as you may think. Instead, I think of the so many people that are in a worse situation, who are really struggling, who are helpless, and looking for somebody who can come and do the right thing. They disfranchise me. It is not me that will suffer so much out of it. I felt bad, yes, and I'm feeling bad. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the people that really will suffer for this are the people that are helpless, who are looking for somebody that would help them. I'm hoping that 2021, 
such a thing would not happen. I will be able to contest in 2021. And I'm hoping that the Zambian people will give me that support for me to come and change this country. I'm not going to waste my time, you know, contesting uh, this, uh, this decision. I will uh, look forward to 2021. I'm looking forward to 2021. And 2021, believe you me, I'll be more alert. I trusted people. Our Secretary General said, ah, you know, maybe these people, they are trying to be fun with us. I refused. I said, no. It is just a way. When Margaret didn't call us back, I, I wanted to doubt. He doubted. And I said, no, don't worry. We are okay. When he called me to say, these people are telling us that we can't fail, I laughed. I said, no, we are filing. I trusted people. Unfortunately, they have let me down. Nonetheless, it was not my time. Because what God has given, nobody can take it away from you. I am very sure that even in 2021, God will give me what is good for me. God knows better. Those people might think that they are doing me bad. They have played me. But I am very sure God has a way. God has a way. I'll continue uh, saving the Zambian people and doing what I can uh, in the meantime. And I thank the people that supported me. Please continue supporting me. Please continue encouraging me. And those who have to help me, please uh, help us. We really need help. We really need help because one of the biggest challenges that I have is resources. If I had resources, I think I would do much, much more. But a number of times, you know, I'm limited on, on resources. You know, right now there is an issue at the Black Mountain. I want to go to the Black Mountain. I want to go and talk to people. I know there is something that is behind that collapsing of that uh, the Black Mountain. Uh, there is something. And I'll soon be coming back to report to you because I followed the case of the Black Mountain. But my problem is, it's a challenge of resources, you know. For me to go to Kitwe and, you know, move, move about, do this and that, I need, I, I need resources. So some of you who can help me, please help me. I want to save the Zambian people. Right now in Chunga, in, 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 in uh, Linda, they want water. I want to go and see what I can do. In John Lane, they want water. I want to see if we can sink some boreholes for them. I don't have money for that. If people can come forward, work with me to help these people, I would really be glad. I'm a politician, but the number one thing is that I have a heart for the poor people. So maybe forget about the, politi the politics. Look at what I'm trying to do for the Zambian people and help me. Tuande is saying in work in conjunction with the PF, we know. You work in conjunction with the PFR. I'm a brother, such things, I'll leave them. I'll leave them. How much do they pay you? I think this is a this is a this is a young person who doesn't know life, who thinks that money is just picked from the streets. Pay me for what? Humble voice, resources, things is. I can see there are a number of comments here, and it might be very, very difficult for me to respond to some of these comments. Uh, it might be better if uh, maybe I start, I look at uh, them. Um, of here. We are not interested in how many people you're looking at. You're just wasting time. Yeah, I get discouraged to read some of these comments because most of these comments really, they don't mean much. Though you say I'm a joker, but um, I mean, you seem to be more of joking than the joker that you think I am. Sorry, sir, but yesterday incidents, about yesterday's incident, let's just move on to continue running checks and balances. You indeed give me uh you indeed give them pressure others may say you are not a threat but it is seems you are i i leave that i leave that to people to judge i only wish they had allowed me you know to be on the ballot so that at least i would have seen how many people would have voted for me at least i wish 
they had allowed me that. I, you know, I was not even so keen. You know, uh, Mali, Malia, Malia Kampamba. I was not even so, you know, anxious to say, I have to win, I have to win. I just wanted to do my best. But I was even very interested to see how many votes I would get. I was quite interested to see that as well. What measures have you taken to save your nomination before? Um, of course, we will, we will be more alert. We'll be more alert. Uh, I can assure you that we'll be more alert. We won't let uh, such a thing happen, not only to me, but also to other political parties who will try to, uh, to be alert. Sorry, but you said it will we'll be focused. Man, we are behind you. Keep mounting the pressure. Thank you, Muma. Thank you, Muma. Hariba, mm, what's your story? I think I've given my story. Uh, why would the PF do that to you? I want to read that. Why would PF do that to you, not UPND and NDC? Why you? Uh, I can't answer for them. I can't answer for them. I can't answer for anyone. All I know is that I was not late. And... Uh, Basically, I was just disfranchised deliberately. You are a social activist, Ali. This law suits you better than being in politics. God is probably confirming your position as a social activist. Well, uh, for me, my dear Christine, the thing is that by the, uh, by the fact that I'm not in government, it uh, doesn't stop me from doing what I have to do. I'll keep on working. I'll keep on doing what I what I have to do. I mean, like some of the things that I'm I'm meeting as I'm as I was going around the communities, I'll still see uh, what I can do about it. And I'm only hoping that some people would come forward and help me with resources. I'm not waiting to be president to help people. I want to help people, even as if even as I'm in opposition. Being in politics, politics is activism. Politics is activism. That's what it is. And I'll keep on being an activist. Don't cry too much, Mr. T. That's real politics. Yes, indeed, I used to say politics at the Havana. I guess on this one, I was one and they have taught me. They have taught me. Yeah. Yeah, could, could have been better if you learned your lesson through the ballot. Yeah, yeah, sure. Medin, I agree with you. It would have been better, yes. Zambian youth are to blame for the happenings in this country. Uh, it's uh, our duty to safeguard the interests of the country. Gabriel Chanda, you are right. You are right. Don't be discouraged. It's well. I'm UPND, but I wanted to carry the day. I wanted you to carry the day. Thanks very much, Nancy. Thanks very much, Nancy. Now that I'm not standing, please, I ask you to go and vote. Please, people, don't be discouraged from voting. Go and vote. Let me make this appeal. Nancy, please go and vote. All of you who wanted to vote for me, I ask you to go and vote. The only thing is that I will not ask you who to vote for, but I can tell you that don't vote for PF unless you are happy if you are happy with pf go and vote for mao sampa but if you are not happy please vote for any other political party vote for any other political party vote for any other candidate don't vote for pf this is all this is the only appeal i can make i know some of you wanted to go and vote for me i am saying if you are not happy with pf don't stay home don't uh, don't stay home. Don't disfranchise yourself. Go and vote, please. Let's reduce on voter apathy. Go and vote. And I am saying to the government that can you declare 26th July a holiday, at least for Lusaka. If not a full holiday, at least make it half day so that people can go and vote. Please go and vote. If you are not happy with PF, don't vote for them vote for another political party so that at the end of the day we can know if indeed the pf is still popular please go and vote let us see what the pf will get and what the other political parties will get especially those of you people in offices please go and vote 
I want to see judges. I want to see lawyers. I want to see businessmen taking their time off to go and vote. Speak. Let this election be a voice of the people. Be the voice that you cannot express. Go and vote. If you love PF, vote for PF. If you don't love PF, go and vote against the PF. Tyali, I'm in high level meeting. You are disturbing. <laughs> but why are you on social media, sir? Just join my party. You will be safe. Okay. Too bad, my friend. I really feel for you. But don't forget that there are always next time. Yes, yes, I agree with you. Thanks very much. At Comedian, this is how it is when you're not affected. The system has not failed Chirifatayali alone. But every Zambian who believes in it, shame to ECZ. Jack, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jack. It's true. It is not, it is not about me. You may be laughing at me, but believe you me, it is against uh, democracy. It is an assault on democracy. It is not about Chirifatayali. I am having my cup of tea, by the way. I'm still having my cup of tea. I'm still okay. But there are so many people, think of the so many people who are looking up to this government for their livelihood. For their livelihood. These are the people that you should be thinking about. Don't laugh at me. Don't waste your time focusing at me. I am only trying to help. So your ranting or hating me really doesn't help the poor people that I fight for. I only fight for poor people myself. You have the heart of the people. Don't you think it's not... It's that NDC is trying to do as well. Why are you against Kambuidi? Twambo, I'm not against Bakambuili. Uh -uh. I'm against the bad things. And I'm against the bad things that anybody does. It doesn't matter who is involved. It doesn't matter who is involved. I am one person who does not even spare my own children. Those who know me in relation to my children and my private life, they will tell you I don't support wrong things. Even when my child has done something wrong, I don't support it. What is wrong is wrong. If Makambuli did something wrong, I will always stand to point at it to say it is wrong. Anybody who does it, even Edgar Lungu, if it is wrong, it is wrong. That's just how I operate, Twambo. You are very energetic. I wish Zambian youths could learn something from you. Zambian politics are too pathetic. I've learned a lot about Zambian politics, especially the little time I was there, but I feel, okay. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you, Nelson. Daddy, you are a big threat to Mao Samba. They would uh, rather you rallied behind Samba. Se, Sekana, believe you me, the last person I would support in PF is Mao Samba. The last person I would support in PF is Mao Samba. I can never support Mao Samba. That guy is not about people. That guy is about himself. He's running for that position for his prestige, for his, you know, a ego. That is how I see Mao Samba for me. That's why he has been trotting from left, from everywhere, you know, because for him, he wants to have that prestige. He wants to have, come on, I, I, I'm not judging the guy. But from what I've seen, um, he's the last guy I would support. He's the last guy I would support. But those of you who support, who think he's, a, he's an okay guy, fine. It's democracy. Go and vote for him. But if you don't like him, don't stay home. Go and vote. And vote against him. Muka Nua, you knew you were not going to win. Okay, that's what you think. In life, never give up and keep the eyes on the ball. Edna Walia, I will do that. I will do that. And thanks for the encouragement. You are a bloody, bubbling scumbag. Iwe wekamuntu. You are not even an ounce worth it. 
but just a kawanabi clown mojo yeah my brother i don't know which brother mu mu chill you have an opinion i respect it i respect it kateka tayari what what you were what were you doing to say if your episode had happened to another candidate Eh? What were you going to say if the episode had happened to another candidate? I can imagine you doing five posts by now laughing at such a candidate. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Um, I can only talk about what happened. And what happened is that I'm crying. Uh, I was um, treated unjustly. That's all I can say. At Comedian, this is what it is when you are not affected okay does it mean that the comments are i'm happy for you i'm happy of uh jack this comment seems to be do you think pf under the leadership is eating alone you gave us the youth the youth something to think about you gave us something they used to think about most people are jobless and have no money but we'll find time to make fan of you instead of seeing the sense in you they think you are you are the one suffering Mwila, thank you very much you are very right you are, you are very right the fact that i take this time to interact with people it doesn't mean that i mean i'm a joker or i've got nothing to do i am trying to communicate i'm trying to send a message out there and those of you who really think seriously who will see sense in what i'm saying Sometimes, yes, the way I write my articles, I write them in a satire way to encourage people to read. But unfortunately, many times people, you know, look at the finger instead of looking at the sun I'm trying to show them. They look at the joking side instead of the message I'm trying to, I'm trying to portray. I write my articles in a satire way to encourage you to read, for you to enjoy when you are reading. But please, look at the message what message am i trying to send unfortunately most of the people that read my articles they really miss the point they really miss the point and when i look at the comments i feel sad by people's logic many people's logic and the poor reading culture it makes me sad I can assure you that some of the, you know, like people who have even taken me to court out of my articles, it is out of poor reading couches. They even go and hire lawyers to take me to court when I've clearly not defamed them. But they take me to court that he has defamed me. Some of these cases will be coming in court. And by the way, the case of HH, which was in, in Livingstone, has been transferred to Lusaka. So my application was successful. It is in Lusaka right now. I've not wanted to make, uh, you know, to become sensational about that case because I want to encourage dialogue between, uh, you know, between and among uh, different political parties. That's why I'm not making so much sense. And really, I'm not so keen to be in court with other opposition political parties over petty issues over petty issues corruption issues those are not petty i'll still go to court and defend those cases but issues of defamation and whatever i'm really not so keen i would rather i concentrate my energy on something that will build you know uh, the lives of zambians other than wasting time in court you know saying no this one and uh, i'm not so much interested i'm not so much interested and i hope other political party leaders who will take this my olive branch you know who embrace it so that we can move forward other than us wasting time you know he defamed me what, what when i actually didn't defame anyone mr tayari you are a hard working man i wish zambian youth could learn something from you i want to be i want to be like you and bring this country this country this country this in my country angola nelson Thank you very much. Thank you. Tayadi, we we lila boy. Nivi life chabe. You are right, Chileshe. Tayadi, you where do you get the energy? I like it, Mwe. It's not. 
God has given me the energy and the good health. God has given me the energy and the good health. And I want to use it for the good of so many people. That's why, you know, I fight and I do what I do. Others, yes, they, sometimes, yes, I, I go over the bar when I lose my emotions, you know. But, I mean, I want to do something right for the people. I want to fight for people. Dewe, uh, I like uh, your courage, Mr. President. I ask for you to pray for me. Sometimes, I mean, it's, yes, I also get scared, but please pray for me. Tired, you have, tired, you have addressed the issue of my people. You never followed them? Who never followed you? Moses Chikwanda. I don't know, people are making fun that when I said my people follow me and they never followed me. <laughs> I don't know what you are talking about, but uh, I had my people. Well, if you wanted a big crowd, we didn't go with a big crowd. We followed the law. We followed the law. We went with only the, the number that was required. Those are the people that we, we went. I didn't want to the, that situation of going with so many people like what the PF and the UPND did. I didn't agree to that. You don't need all those people. When they only need 15 people, why do you carry thousands, honestly? For me, I didn't see sense in that. And I will never do that. Even in, when I will be filing in as president, I'm not going to go with, uh, uh, you know, so many people. It just disturbs. It just inconveniences. So there's no need for that. But PF is still very popular. Can you give us some ideas on how to win, how to despopularize the PF? It's not about despopularizing PF. No, it's not about that. That's not the objective. Trumbo. It's not. I, I can't have an agenda to despopularize PF. No. It's about what PF doing. If PF are doing the right thing, fine. If they are doing wrong things, I mean, people ought to vote against them. It is about what they do. It's not hating any political party because it's not my party. No, it is about what are they doing, and that's how I operate. Why didn't you register? What went wrong exactly? I think I've 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 I've, I've done that. Uh, they they got scared because you have too much info, James. I won't comment on that. I'll just leave them, but. Uh, let me just say thank you for the comment. Thanks, Mr. Tayali, for encouraging me to vote. I almost packed my voters' card. Now the issue is who to vote for. Uh, Tayali, I so much believed in your Adede, in your Adede shame. Um, Farai Kamanga, please go and vote. Please go and vote. Everybody, go and vote. Go and vote. If you're not happy with PF, Go and vote against them. If you are happy with PF, go and vote for them. Who to vote for? Choose anybody. Choose anybody. Choose anybody. Just look around. I'm sure these 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 candidates will be giving their manifesto, their manifestos. Whoever appeals to you, vote for that person. Vote for that person. But if you are not happy with PF, please na papata. Don't go and vote for PF. Vote for another political party. Personally, I felt very bad over what happened to you, Mr. Tayari. I'm sure you will still remember our discussion on WhatsApp. Hard luck, bro, and uh, take heart. All is well. And by the way, there is always next time. It's through Don. It's through Don Kunda. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. There is always a next time. There is never going to the next time for you find something better to do and like making a fool of yourself to Zambians. William, that is your opinion. I don't think others think the same and certainly not myself. I don't think I'm making a fool of myself. I think I'm doing a service here and some people are benefiting out of what I'm doing. So I'll continue doing that. Just say don't vote for PF which normal person eh? which normal person like crooks <laughs> well people are different lamek in as much as we may not think that pf is doing well there are others who think that pf is doing well so it is their democratic right that's what i believe in 
please campaign for Peterson. He is the closest to being neutral. Um, in Uganda, well, I don't want to pick a particular candidate. I don't want to pick any particular candidate because uh, I want to have a relationship that is uh, the same with all other political parties. I don't want to compromise myself, uh, not to compromise myself, but to to be biased uh, in this instance. I will remain neutral. I will remain neutral uh, in this instance, except that I still insist, go and vote. Ikale nife na imwe, mulapanga fie ichongo. That's why the PF let you, left you. They seen you that you are not responsible man. Uh, too much ku savaila. Sylvia, God bless you. Too bad for you, Adede. About this wrong, about, about his wrongs that you say he's wrong. I like you sometimes. Thank you very much, Sanji. Yes, sometimes you may like me, sometimes you may not like me. It's normal, my brother or my sister. Such is life. What goes around comes around. Reality can see something people liking. They test of their own medicine. Remember. Okay. President Ali, where did you miss it? All of you, all of all you, the candidates who managed to file their nomination. You know and understand the electoral process better. Are you lodging a complaint? I've discussed that. Guess this signal from Mama. Boss Naim, we try talking break Facebook. When are you going to be successful in life? Anyway, I think I've handled some of the comments. Some of the comments, I'll respond to them, uh, you know, by typing. But thanks very much for all of you that um, uh, tuned in. I am looking for resources to get in Kitwe. I want to Kitwe. I want to bring up what really happened in Kitwe, the Black Mountain. Believe you me, it was not an accident. I refuse. What happened at Black Mountain is not an accident, and I'll be coming back on that one. All those of you who are involved, get ready. I will mention your names here. I will mention your names here. It wasn't an accident. But before I come to Facebook, before I have this address, I want to make sure that I go to, uh, to Kitwe and get some more facts i want to talk to a few people there i've spoken to a number of you some of you are dodging me you don't want to talk to me but uh don't worry i'll still get the information and when i come to talk don't blame me don't blame me don't blame me because i've been phoning you i've been trying to reach you so that i can hear your side of story because some of the stories that you have given me they are not convincing me you cannot kid me i can read between lines what happened in Kitwe is not, is not an accident. I will talk about it. And Edgar Lungu doesn't know this. Edgar Lungu doesn't know this. Musukwa has an idea. Musukwa has an idea of what happened to Kitwe. But he, he's being a coward. Musukwa, the mines minister, is being a coward to really expose what is going on at the Black Mountain. He hasn't eaten money. I can't accuse him that he has eaten money. No. But he's just being a coward. He's trying to be naive. He's trying to be naive. And he should have actually resigned. Because if you can't handle the heat in the kitchen, you better move out of the kitchen and allow people who have got courage to do the job. Musukwa, you are a coward. You are scared to really bring out what is happening at, at the Black Mountain. You are not telling your boss, Ed Galungu, what is happening at the Black Mountain. You are not doing it. People are dying. And you people, you don't want to take up responsibility. Anyway, that in another address. For now, I was talking about me being disfranchised. I was not late. I was just deliberately disfranchised because they were scared of a day day. Nonetheless, we will come up with another formula for the nation. Come 2021, I'll be contesting for president. Thanks very much and may God bless you.
all of you. I have to go.